Hey there folks, Blockbuster Peach from here, analyzing the films you may or may not have seen on the big screen. And I just came back from a double feature. I got at, AM, at my local um, AMC, I got to see Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which is actually my fourth time seeing it on the big screen. Uh, I saw it three times when it came out in 2011. And I saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I'm going to reveal my thoughts, but first, a recap of my thoughts on the Apes franchise. The first film is the best film of the franchise, from 1968 with Charlton Heston, you know, it's a great movie. Second one might be my least favorite of the original films, Beneath. It has some interesting weird sci-fi elements, but as a whole it's really slow and kind of boring. Except for the fact that at the end you can say, Charlton Heston blows up the Earth. That's epic. Escape from the Planet of the Apes um, has a nice um, role reversal where now the apes are interacting with, you know, a contemporary human setting. At least for, you know, back in the 70s. And then you have... Conquest, which is arguably the best sequel in the original franchise, and it's kind of an inspiration for Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So that would probably be my uh, second favorite in the original franchise, but third overall, not counting Dawn. Uh, then you got Battle, which I used to hate on a lot, but recently I've watched and I said to myself, this is actually not that bad of a movie. So it's okay, it's gone up a little bit. Tim Burton 2001 remake, while it does have some admirable, quali admirable qualities, it's not a very good movie in my opinion, it's a waste of time. And then Rise of the Planet of the Apes I think is my second favorite overall in the franchise behind the original. And that movie, you know, I thought was a really nice beginning to the franchise. It started out small. It, you know, what I really liked about Rise is that it wasn't like one of these summer blockbusters where you're like shooting it and it's like taking place in the entire cityscape of New York or the entire cityscape of San Francisco. You know, it wasn't like giant whales and aliens just fighting around buildings. No, these are apes and you was more personalized, like, combat. And you got to feel deaths more, even if some of the apes, you didn't know their names or, you know, whatnot. So then I saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is one of my most anticipated movies of 2014, along with um, X-Men Days of Future Past. Both films were from 20th Century Fox, and both had films that were released in 2011. Rise and of the Planet of the Apes and X-Men First Class were 2011 films. And then in 2014, we got X-Men Days of Future Past and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And this has a really nice uh, midsummer slot. So what did I think about this movie? Holy shit. This, I, I, look, I'm going to need to see this a couple more times to get my thoughts, like, cemented. But I think this is not only the best, it, not only this is better than Rise. This is one of the better Apes movies overall. Uh, just in general, okay? I don't know if it's as good as the original, but it's, it's probably my sec at least second favorite overall in the franchise. And it's one of the best sequels I've ever seen and the best movie I've seen this year and one of the best summer movies I've seen in a while. Part of that I'm probably saying because I saw Transformers 4 and that left a bad taste in my mouth. And this movie like really cleaned it and made me a better human being, ironically enough. So what is uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes about? Well, generally speaking, this is take place uh, 10 years after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now there's like, you have the simian flu which killed off a good portion of humanity and now you have like these little ragtag groups of humans lying about and this one particular group based in San Francisco is trying to get in contact with other groups of humans. Unfortunately, they're going to run out of power pretty soon in like a matter of weeks. So they need to uh, investigate this dam and repair it so they can gain back power. Problem is that the, the problem is that you have these this ape colony which is led by Caesar, played by the amazing Andy Serkis. And he's, you know, he has his own family, he's a, you know, his wife, Cornelia, or like, you know, his mate. And he has two sons, Blue Eyes, and I forget the baby's name, but it has a baby that's born. And the humans are like, the dam is like close to the ape's, like, main location. And you come to, you, it's interesting because on one hand, Caesar doesn't hate, humans totally, but he realizes that if they gain power, then they could, you know, potentially overrun the apes. Uh, but he decides to help out the humans because some of them do seem to be good, but there are really a lot of bits of tension between the humans and the apes. Some of this is instigated by Koba, pl uh, played by Toby Cabell, whom we saw in Rise, 
at the Planet of the Apes kind of as like a later, as a kind of almost a subplot, but he, you kind of recognize Koba as like a potential great Planet of the Apes antagonist. And he's a great villain. I just want to start off by saying that. Koba is one of the best summer movie villains I've seen in a while. It's because, like, he's kind of like Magneto in the sense that uh, Magneto hates humans and Koba really hates humans. And he's willing to, do, he's, this guy's willing to do whatever it takes. He's willing to kill other apes and disobey other apes and, you know, ruin, the potentially ruin the peace just to exterminate humanity. And he's pretty, he's a pretty terrifying presence on screen because you don't know, he, he's capable of anything, you know. And uh, that just makes him a great antagonist. Of course, Andy Serkis is amazing as Caesar. And he, he in this film, hes you kind of see he, he's older. He's, he, he's a bit m more reserved in this film. He's not as, like, upbeat and cheery because, you know, back then he was a younger ape where, you know, he knew the love of James Franco's character. But now he's, he's kind of the leader of this, you know, this ape group, this ape sanctuary, essentially. Not ape sanctuary in the sense of, like, a human location, but, like, you know, like a group of apes. And he... He's just... You, you really see him as the leader of the apes. And he's, he's kind of... He has, like, a trust issue with the humans, but not to the point where he's like, I hate all humans, you know. But he's certainly a conflicted character, and you do definitely see that in uh, Circus's performance. Now, you also get, like, other apes that return, like Maurice, the orangutan, and you got Rocket, who is the former alpha male in, like, the ape sanctuary owned by um, the Landon character, played by Brian Cox. Uh, but he's not in this movie, <laughs> Brian Cox, so why am I talking about him? What I really liked about this uh, movie as well is that it wasn't. It wasn't just a whole lot of like, um, like fan service. I want to say, like, of course you have apes on horseback and apes with guns, but other than that, there's not a whole lot. There's not. There's not like like every scene is not just like an apes reference. Like that. That that's something that happened in Rise. Where there's like a lot of like apes throwbacks, and that didn't bother me so much. But I understood that there were people who were bothered by that. Uh, but this film, I would definitely say, feels like a Planet of the Apes movie, and that's its greatest strength. In Rise, it, it, you know, you, got, you had to get there. You had to build up to, you know, the apes breaking free of the, of the you know, the, the, like, prison and going to the Redwood Forest. In this movie, the apes have their own established culture. They have their own way of doing things. And, um, you know, especially when, like, uh, apes are taking people prisoner and apes are, like, riding on horseback and shooting at people and stuff, you feel that this is a Planet of the Apes movie. Also, what I really loved is the music, especially in certain pieces where in, it involved Koba. You, it got like a more uh, tribal, not tribal necessarily, but it felt more like the original Planet of the Apes. Like almost a little bit, not too much like it, but almost a slight throwback to Jerry Goldsmith's theme, themes in the original Planet of the Apes uh, movie. It also has some nice throwbacks to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It uh, has some nice uh, little references and throwbacks there. And i got to talk about the human characters before I end. Uh, this definitely improves on the human characters. You have Jason Clark, who's not necessarily like the leader of the humans, but he's like a respected member of that community. And Jason Clark's a really good actor. I've seen him in like Zero Dark Thirty and Great Gatsby. And he he's definitely kind of like the human equivalent of Caesar, in a sense. Except... You know, he's a human being, and Caesar is just a really interesting character. Now, I'm not saying Malcolm isn't totally interesting, it's just, you know, Malcolm has, like, a more, like, Caesar is the one you really care about, because he's Caesar, is what I'm trying to say here. And the, it, you really feel the sense of, like, friendship between Caesar and, um, and the Jason Clark character. Carrie Russell, who I think is gorgeous, and she, she never ages. That's, that's amazing. Uh, she's good in the movie, too. And you have Gary Oldman. I think he had some emotional beats that really worked. Um, I can understand why people had problems with him as kind of a, a slight antagonist. But I think he works in the movie um, because at the end of the day, he just he doesn't want these apes to ruin like human civilization as we know it. You know, he's trying to protect humanity. And I think that's what makes him a great character. And the action scenes, 
are great. You really feel when like an ape gets injured or an ape gets attacked. Like there was one shot in the movie where you see like, a gorilla like a gorilla dragging like carrying and dragging ape corpses like in the battle. And I was like almost on the verge of tears just watching this. It was like like almost as good as any like war movie you've ever seen. So that is the movie without spoiling it. I didn't know if there was an after credit scene. I didn't stick around to the very, very end because I know Rise had a mid credit scene, but I don't know if this has like an after credit scene like all the way at the end. But I will say this is my favorite movie, probably going to end up being my favorite movie this summer and probably in my like favorite movies of 2014. I'll have a spoiler review perhaps uh, later this weekend or on Monday or Tuesday when I've collected more of my thoughts on this movie. See you guys later.